Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. We're going to talk about mathematics. And uh, they have several issues with the way they teach it in the schools. Here's the funny thing. Adding and multiplying are just different versions of each other. So we got four operations, which are all mirror images of each other in a uh, way. And they teach them as separate, distinct blocks of information, which cannot be... There's lines between them that cannot be fudged. When you're teaching subtraction, you teach subtraction. When you're teaching multiplication, you teach multiplication. You don't mess around. Well, I disagree with that. I was showing human multiplication because he's so good at his addition and subtraction. Where's my other marker? He's so good at addition and subtraction, I thought, we'll, we'll show him some multiplication then. And he said, uh, this is just like adding, which indeed is how I presented it to him. So... And I was like, yeah, that's right. It is just a powerful way to add. So let's talk about two different things, how to teach um, multiplication and how to teach fractions. Let's do multiplication first. Uh, we have an owler economy. Our mascot is the owl, uh, and because owls are intelligent and wise, and Athena it was on one side of the ancient Athens coin, and the owl, her pet owl was on the other. So we have an owl on our dollars, and uh, Deseret Academy Owlers. So, one day they got to school and I introduced Owlers to them. So I said, I have some five Owler notes here, and we have four students in our class. So I said to them, I gave out five Owler notes four times. I said, remember that, whenever you're... Whenever you're uh, thinking, how is this uh, related, remember that it's an out-of-order sentence. It's two happening six times, or it's three happening five times. So we have five plus five plus five plus five. And I ask the kids to add that up, and they get 20, sure enough. And I say, well, five times four is 20, because watch this, five, 10, 15, 20. We've got 20. So that equals 20. 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 20. And then, you know, you show them four groups of five there. These are the five hours, and these are the four students. 20 hours I gave out altogether. You can add it up or you can multiply it. Now this uh, particular way of going about it allows us to, to explain one times and two times, or pardon me, one times and zero times much better. Because five owlers being given out to the kids a total of zero times means that the kids got zero owlers. Okay? Five owlers being given out to one kid means that I gave a total of five owlers out. This is the one that confuses a lot of people. If you have five men in a play and they do something zero times, it turns out that they've done it zero times, doesn't it? And you can still have those five men, but it confuses a lot of people. Where did that quantity five go? We had it over here on this side of the equation, and we've got nothing on this side. Well, this, I think, is a superior way to explain it, rather than saying, um, as they always told me, and as just in the last couple of weeks I've asked several people, I said, why is it that multiplying by zero equals zero? And they said, because any time you multiply a number by zero, it equals zero. <laughs> Thanks for the explanation. Great. Can't give that to students, though. And I didn't need, you know, I was just, it was a conversation. I figured this method of explanation out a long time ago, actually, in high school, trying to, I was trying to understand math, and I was just not happy with the way they were teaching and stuff. All right, on to fractions. Uh, I don't know how they teach fractions, but it's a disaster. And the kid can go for a long time and never deal with a fraction like 3 over 2. They don't introduce those to them at all because they would confuse them or something. So then the kid gets in high school and he's in pre-algebra and he gets 7 over 3 and he can't deal with it. So here's how I did fractions. Here's how I teach the kids fractions. I do it every single day, just cumin and caden, the two younger ones, not yet. Um, let's say we have, uh, let's see, uh, Nine sixths of a pizza. So here we have a pizza, 
and another pizza and each one's cut into six pieces and this one has got three pieces gone some crumbs on the tray there so we've got nine pieces of pizza out of the six that our pizza is cut, in, cut up into. In other words, if we have the six out of six, that's one, and we have three out of six, that's one half, and there's one and one half pizzas. Um, so you go through these steps. This, this I went a little quick in the reduction and stuff. I avoided reducing. We had it in lowest terms as much as we could. And now I'm teaching them to put it into lowest terms, which means that they have to know what prime and composite numbers are, and so on. So I said, Caden, we, have, we need four people to play a game of ice hockey. So you invite a bunch of your friends, because you're sure, you're sure some of them won't show up. And we get nine people to show up. We needed four. I said, how many games of ice hockey can we have? He said, we can have two whole games of ice hockey. I said, that's correct. And I was about to say, but wouldn't there be someone left over, right? And it clicked in his head and he said, there would be one guy left over. And I said, that's right. One guy out of the four we would need for an additional game. So we have two and one quarters game of ice hockey that we can do now. Or nine-fourths of enough people to play a game of ice hockey requiring four people. And every single day we drill on empirical uh, questions. Then I have, here's a level four subtraction. One minus one third. Two and two thirds minus one third. Three over two minus one over two. Seventeen over nineteen minus one over nineteen. Uh, then there's an addition page, too, with a lot of fractions on it. So they are getting it in an empirical way, which I was never given. They are getting multiplication in an empirical way, which I was never given. I, I believe addition is basically empirical. So Now, multiplication, there's no reason that we have to em empiricize division, because once you have multiplication, you just they are just the flip side of each other. So um, there we are, fractions and multiplication. Uh, I don't know how you were taught. This is not how I was taught. And I despised math for a long time, and I hated the way that they always gave uh, the answers. Uh, anything times zero, zero. I said, why? And they said, because anything times zero, zero. You know? It's not, I'm, it's not what I'm going to do to my students. And math is, by the way, I'll mention again, math is my weak subject. So now let's talk about what I'm doing in science. Um, we're starting necessarily in the ancient world, but... I found, well, I felt like the kids needed a vocabulary. So I couldn't start really telling them the story of the ancient Greeks and the planets and the stars and stuff. When these kids don't know the, even the first basic idea, uh, the difference between a planet or a star. They had no clue what a planet or a star is. So we spend a week watching some pretty good videos so they have a basic vocabulary vocabulary about the planets, uh, what a star is, and the, our sun is a star, and a galaxy is a large collection of stars, and the entire universe is organized into galaxies, uh, and we looked at a bunch of picture books, and, and we've got the basic, basic vocabulary nailed down. So now we're going to be able to understand better as we go along what it is that we're talking about at each stage. I still ask the kids and there's one of them who's still foggy on what a moon is. Uh, a planet orbits around a star. A moon orbits around a planet. Uh, a star is a burning sphere of gas in space. You know, we've got some basic real easy definitions so that they know what I'm talking about when I say things about what the ancients thought about stuff. So that's where we start is basic vocabulary in astronomy. Um, but uh, not everything requires astronomical vocabulary. So some of the stuff we've been studying include Archimedes and Hippocrates. I read to the kids from a, an ancient uh, Egyptian text and from a, a Babylonian text on how to heal certain types of